Hello students, I am Sanjana Kavati, Assistant Professor, Department of CSC, AITM, Belgavi. Let us continue with the video lectures on storage area networks. In this video, we shall move to the uh, concept of data protection that is using RAID. When the rapid adoption of computers for businesses, business processes stimulated the growth of new applications and databases, significantly increasing the demand for storage capacity and performance increased. At the time, the data was stored on a single large expensive disk drive called as Single Large Expensive Drive, SLED, that is Single Large Expensive Drive. Use of these single disk could not meet the required performance levels because they were capable of serving only a limited number of input outputs that is IOs. So today data center uh, data centers house uh, hundreds of disk drives in their storage infrastructure. Disk drives are inherently susceptible to failures due to mechanical wear and tear and other environmental factors which could result in data loss or data unavailability. So the greater the number of disk drives in a storage array, the greater the probability of the disk failure in the array. For example, consider a storage array of 100 disk drives, each with the average life expectancy of 7,50,000 hours. The average life expectancy of this collection in the array, uh, therefore it becomes 7,50,000 divided by 100, uh, which is equal to almost 7,500 or 7,500 hours. This means that a disk drive in this array is likely to fail at least once in 7500 hours. Now let us understand what is RAID. RAID is an enabling technology that leverages multiple drives as a part of set that provides data protection against drive failures. In general, RAID implementation also improves the storage system performance by serving IOs from multiple disks simultaneously. Modern arrays with flash drives also benefit in terms of protection and performance by using RAID. So how did uh, this RAID came into existence? In 1987, Patterson, uh, Gibson and Katz at the University of California uh, published a paper titled A Case for Redundant Arrays of Inexpensive Disk that is nothing but RAID. This paper described the use of small capacity inexpensive disk drives as an alternative to large capacity drives common, to, uh, common on mainframe computers. The term RAID has been redefined to re refer to independent disk to reflect advances in the storage technology. RAID technology has now grown from an academic concept to an industry standard and is common implementation in today's storage arrays. So what is RAID? RAID is basically redundant array of independent disks. Okay. Let us continue or let us understand this RAID in detail in the video. Let us understand the RAID implementation methods. The two methods of RAID implementation are hardware and software. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, let us see what are those. First, we shall see software RAID. Software RAID is uh, RAID uses host-based software to provide RAID functions. It is implemented at the operating system level and does not use a dedicated hardware controller to manage the RAID array. So, the software RAID implementation offers cost and simplicity benefits when compared to hardware RAID. However, they have the following limitations. There are some limitations associated with this software RAID. First one is performance. Software RAID affects the overall system performance. This is due to additional CPU cycles required to perform RAID calculation. Apart from normal processing of the CPU, CPU cycles will be used only to calculate the uh, performance of RAID. Okay, so that is how it is giving a disadvantage in terms of CPU power. Next is supported features. Software RAID does not support all RAID levels. So this is also one of the disadvantage that uh, software RAID does not support all the different types of RAID levels. Third one is operating system compa compatibility. So software RAID is tied to the host operating system. Hence upgrades, of, upgrades to the software uh, RAID or to the operating system should be validated for compatibility. This leads to inflexibility in data processing environment. Even if we upgrade RAID software or if we upgrade operating system, we should check the compatibility 
of those two every time we make some changes or we we upgrade the system otherwise it will cause to inflexibility in the data processing environment Uh, next we shall see hardware read in hardware read implementations a specialized hardware controller is implemented either on the host or on the array controller card read is a host based hardware read implementation in which a specialized read controller is installed in the host and disk drives are connected to it manufacturers also integrate raid controllers on motherboards a host based raid controller is not an efficient solution in a data center environment with a large number of host the external raid controller uh, is an array based hardware raid it cast it acts as an uh, interface between the host as well as the disk so it presents storage volumes to the host and a uh, host manages these volumes as physical drives the key functions of the raid controllers are as follows uh, it manage uh, manages and controls the disk aggregations translation of io request between logical disk and physical disk data regeneration in the event of disk failures so these are the functions of the raid controllers okay now let us understand raid techniques array techniques there are basically three techniques first one is striping mirroring and then parity for uh, these forms the basis for defining various raid levels so these techniques determine the data availability and performance characteristics of a raid set first we shall see striping striping is a technique to spread data across multiple drives that is more than one to use the drives in parallel so all the read and write heads work simultaneously by allowing uh, more more data to be processed in a shorter time and increasing the performance compared to reading and writing from a single disk since the data is spread over multiple disk the performance or the time taken to read or write operations is less compared to uh, the performance using only single disk within each a uh, disk in a raid set a predefined number of contiguously address addressable disk blocks are defined as strip okay so within a disk in a raid set predefined number of contiguously addressable disk disk blocks are called as a strip uh, the set of aligned strips that snaps across all the disk within a raid set is called stripe okay so a set of aligned strips that snaps across all the disk within the uh, red set is called a stripe you can see in this figure it shows physical and logical representation of striped red set okay strip size which is also called as strip depth stripe depth uh, it describes the number of blocks in a strip and the maximum amount of data that it can be written to or read from a single disk in the uh, set of reads okay so assuming that the access data starts at the beginning of the strip okay all the strips in a stripe have uh, the same number of blocks having a smaller strip size means that the data is broken into smaller pieces while spread across the disk coming to uh, the uh, stripe size it is a multiple of strip size by the number of data disk in the read for example in a five disk striped read set with a strip size of 64 kb the stripe size will be 320 kb that is 6 64 kb into 5 uh, okay 5 is it is a five disk striped read set okay uh, so that will be 320 kb now coming to stripe width refers to the number of data strips in a stripe striped read does not provide any data protection unless parity uh, or mirroring is used okay uh, this parity and mirroring we will be studying uh, in the upcoming slides so uh, in the figure you can see that uh, the spindles stripe and strip what is strip you can see it is a number of contiguously addressable blocks disk blocks okay so now coming to stripe uh, it is 
it is going to be uh, spread over the multiple disk set okay within the red okay you can uh, see that there are three uh, disk that have been arranged okay so stripe is consisting uh, stripe is covering three disk sets here okay and this darker shade and lighter shade there are two shades darker shade is representing stripe 1 and lighter shade is representing stripe 2 okay if you arrange the disc one above the other you can see uh, this uh, the second figure okay how it looks like stripe 1 it will be spread across all the disc stripe 2 is also spread across all the disc this is the top view and this is the side view you can see the next technique is mirroring Mirroring is a technique whereby the same data is stored in, uh, in two different disk drives yielding two copies of the same data. If one of the disk drive failure occurs, the data intact on the surviving disk drive that is stored on the other disk drive and the controller continues to service the host data request from the surviving disk of a mirrored pair. So even if one disk failure occurs, the other disk which has the same copy of data is used to manage the processing so when a failed disk is replaced with a new disk the controller copies the data from the surviving disk of the uh, mirror pair, mirrored pair so this activity is transparent to the host you can see in the figure we have two sets of disk drives which has the same data okay a b c d e the same data is uh, uh, on the other set of the disk okay this the copying of the same data into another disk is nothing but mirroring there will be two sets of disk drives which has the same data containing so that even if one disk drive fails we have another copy of the data okay so when the failed disk is replaced with a new disk the controller controller copies the data from the surviving disk of the mirrored pair so this activity will be transparent to the host in addition to providing the complete data redundancy mirroring enables fast recovery from disk failures however disk mirroring provides only data protection and is not a substitute for data backup it is just a substitution for uh, it is it just provides uh, data protection in because in case of disk failure uh, the recovery of the data is easy in this case but it cannot be used as a substitute for data backup Mirroring constantly captures changes in the data, whereas backup captures point-in-time images of the data. Okay, mirroring, it is a continuous process as and when you make changes in one of the disks, the same data will be copied onto another disk. But whereas a backup, what it does, if I want to take backup at suppose 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning, so the data, whatever has been processed or whatever data has been stored till 10 o'clock only will be copied okay after 10 o'clock even after a single second after that time if there is a change in the data that cannot be captured in the backup okay so mirroring involves duplication of data that is the amount of storage capacity needed is to needed is twice the amount of data being stored if i want to store 1 gb of data i should have uh, disk drives containing 2 gb of space because 1 gb per disk i need such two disk drives because i am maintaining it in two disk drives okay therefore mirroring is considered to be expensive and is preferred for mission critical applications only that cannot afford the risk of any data loss so since it is expensive it is only used for mission critical applications uh, in which uh, any risk of data loss cannot be handled in such cases mirroring will be used Mirroring improves read performance because read request can serve, uh, serviced by both the disk. However, write performance is slightly slower than the uh, than in a single disk because each write request manifests as two writes on the disk drive. Reading will be faster because two disk drives will be having the same data. So you can fetch from any of the disk. But writing is little lower because uh, if I want to make one write operation, there has to be two write operations implemented because same data is written into another set of disks also. So mirroring does not deliver the same level of write performance as a striped red. The next write technique is parity. 
Parity is a method to protect stripe data from the disk failures without the cost of mirroring. So an additional disk drive is added to hold the parity, a mathematical construct that allows recreation of the missing data. What is parity? It is a mathematical construct that allows recreation of the missing data. Parity is a redundant technique that ensures protection of data without maintaining a full set of duplicate data. Calculation of parity uh, is a function of the RAID controller. Okay. Let us understand this. Uh, parity information can be stored on separate dedicated disk drives or distributed across the drives in a RAID set. You can see in the figure, it shows a parity RAID set. Uh, the first four disk labeled as data disk contain the data. Okay. The fifth disk labeled as parity disk stores the parity information which in this case is the sum of the elements in each row. You can see the parity disk has value 9 in the first row which is the sum of the uh, values in all the four disk drives. Okay. Four uh, disk sets. 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 which is equal to 9. Coming to second row, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 1 it is 5. Third row, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9. Last row, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7. So the first four sets are called as data disk. The last one is the parity disk. In this case, parity disk is nothing but the sum of the data in each row of the data disk. Okay. Uh, now, if one of the data disk fails, okay, the missing value can be calculated by subtracting the sum of the rest of the elements from the parity value. Now, suppose uh, the second disk, uh, uh, a second disk set, in that uh, the value one, it this disk, this particular disk gets failed. So that means I have lost this data. Uh, data is what it is containing the value one. Now, how do I recover it? How I can recover? I can add the remaining values or the remaining data and subtract it from the parity disk. That is 3 plus 2 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. I will subtract this 8 from the value 9. So 8 minus 9 is equal to 1. So that data I am going to put it on the disk that is failed. Okay. Uh, here for simplicity the computation of parity is represented as an arithmetic sum of the data. So, but however, parity calculation, it is a bitwise XOR operation. In this, just to understand, uh, this uh, addition uh, method is used just to understand the concept. Normally, uh, the parity calculation will be a bitwise XOR operation. Okay. Compared to mirroring, parity implementation uh, consider considerably reduces the cost associated with the data protection. Uh, consider an example of parity RAID configuration with 5 disks where 4 disks hold the data and the 5th holds the parity information. In this example, parity requires only 25% of the extra disk space compared to mirroring which requires 100% extra disk space. So in mirroring what is to happen if I want to store 1 GB of data, I should have 2 GB of space. But in this case it is not so, I just need 25% extra of the whatever data size is okay however there are some disadvantages also associated with parity uh, the parity information is generated from data on the disk therefore parity is recalculated every time there is a change in the data normally this parity will be generated based on the data that is stored in the disk therefore parity has to be recalculated every time there is a change in the data this recalculation is time consuming and it affects the performance of the RAID array. So that's it. that is about the different RAID techniques. In the next video we shall see RAID levels. In the upcoming videos we shall study various RAID levels. Keep watching. Thank you.